Hello crochet lovers, welcome once again to our channel where we learn to crochet step by step. Today we'll learn how to make these gloves or mittens inspired by the iconic mittens that we all saw in social media and that Bernie Sanders wore to Joe Biden's inauguration. If you're not yet familiar with these famous mittens, I recommend you go straight to Google and Google the story so you know what it is about. Before we begin, you should know that this crochet project will be done using the tapestry technique, which is basically a technique in which we'll create an image with our hook and different yarn colors. I will explain this for you step by step, and we'll create this pattern together. You'll see how to bring the colors to this side inside the stitches so they are invisible. I'll teach you how to make the color changes, and another very important thing is for you to know we'll be crocheting centered single crochet stitches. This is a variation of the single crochet stitch, but I will teach you how to do this step by step. The main goal for this stitch is to end up having a stitch similar to the one made by knitting with two needles, because that was the technique they actually used for Bernice mittens. We will begin at the top and then we'll move down until we cover the full length of the hand. We'll need four colors, I will be using the Super Merino yarn from the brand Katia, this is for a 5 or 6 millimeter hook. You can find all the information regarding the material on the description so that you end up making something similar in thickness and you can create a pair of mittens in a size that's similar to mine. For this we'll be using a 5 millimeter hook. I created a pattern, a diagram for tapestry crochet, one for women and another for men. You can find the link below on the video's description. The diagram created for women can be used for thinner hands of about 8 cm wide and the men diagram for thicker hands of about 10 cm. The length can change if we add or subtract rows at the end of the project. For women's size it's 32 stitches and for men's size it's 40. That's the only main difference between them. We'll be using 4 colors and you can choose which ones you want. So now let's begin by making a circle with color A, and then we can start with the second part of our pattern. We'll begin with our color A, and we'll make the circle I mentioned. We'll start the same way for women and men, the only difference is that for men we'll go around this one more time. So we make an adjustable knot by setting the short part of the yarn over the part that connects to the yarn ball, and we pull it from below so we can make the knot that we can adjust. Right now we'll insert the hook, but remember that if you need to revisit the basic crochet stitches you can always check out my basic cards for beginners. We now make two chains and in the first one, which will be the central ring, we'll make four single crochet stitches. That's one single crochet, two, three, make sure that they are all in the same hole, and we have now four single crochet stitches. The rows for our mittens will not be closed off, this means we'll make this project grow in a spiral, so it can be useful to have a marker at hand so we can set it in the first stitch we make per row. What we'll do now is pull from the initial thread so we can close the hole. And now it's time to begin the second row. For this one we'll make two single crochets, which is an increase. In each of the stitches available. So we look for the top loop of the first stitch from the previous row, and we make one and two single crochet stitches in the same stitch, that's one increase. Remember to set the marker in the first stitch you made for the second row. Don't forget to do that. This was the first one from the increase we made, and we keep going, in each stitch we'll make one and two single crochet stitches. I'm almost done with this row, by now we should have 8 stitches, 8 top loops. So for the third row we'll make one increase in each of the stitches available, which means that we'll end up having 8 increases. This would be the first one, so 1 and 2 single crochet stitches in the same hole. Remember to set the marker in the first one we made so we don't forget where the row starts. This is the beginning of the third one. And we just keep going, so one and two single crochets in the next hole. One and two single crochets in the next one. And so on until we go all the way around. 
we should have 16 stitches, 16 top loops for the third row. In order to begin the next one, we'll make one single crochet stitch, one increase, over and over until we go all the way around. This means we'll do each one eight times. So in the very first stitch, we'll make one single crochet. Then we set the marker in that top loop. After this, we make one increase, so it's one, and two single crochet stitches in the same hole. And we make this sequence eight more times, one single crochet stitch and one increase in the next hole. So it's one, and two stitches in the same stitch. We'll go all the way around and by the end of this row, we'll end up having 24 stitches, 24 top loops. As we begin the next row, which is the same for men and women, for this one, we'll make two single crochet stitches, one increase over and over. This sequence will also be made eight times for this row. So we make one single crochet stitch over here. We bring in the marker because it's the first stitch of the row and we don't want to get it confused. Then we make another single crochet by itself. Remember, we need to make two, and after that we make one increase. So it's one, and two single crochet stitches in the same hole. We repeat this sequence eight times. So it's one, and two single crochet stitches by themselves. And in the third one, we make one, and two single crochet stitches, which is an increase. We'll go all the way around and by the end of this fifth row, we should have 32 stitches. This is the initial circle for women or small sizes. And for men or big sizes, we'll make one more row. In that row, we'll make three single crochet stitches by themselves and then one increase eight times. So we make one, this is the first one, so we bring the marker back in then two single crochet stitches by themselves, and then the third one. And in the next hole, we make the increase. So it's one, and two single crochets in the same stitch. And we'll repeat this sequence in order to go all the way around. It's three single crochet stitches by themselves, and in the next hole, we make one increase which is one and two single crochets in the same stitch. By the end of this sixth row, which will make for bigger sizes, we should have 40 stitches, 40 top loops. I will keep making my mittens for a woman's size, so my last row should have 32 stitches. If you're making a man's size, remember you should have 40 stitches. The instructions for both sizes are very similar. I'll let you know the little differences as we go. So now we'll begin with the second part of the pattern, which is the diagram for tapestry in crochet. This must be read from right to left and from bottom to top. So we can see that the first stitch for the second row is a stitch in color B. Then we should make three stitches in color A, then one in B, three in A, and so on until we get to the end. Each square represents one single crochet stitch. When we get to the end, we'll see that we just need two in A and one in B. We'll find out later on that to begin a new row in crochet tapestry, we need to make some small variations so that the pattern looks good once we have finished the project. So we'll begin with the first stitch in color B. And it's important to know that for the changing of color in crochet tapestry, we need to leave the last stitch open. So we'll undo the last stitch, and now I'll show you how to make it in order to leave it open. We begin making the last single crochet stitch, and we'll leave it open. So those two loops should be on the hook so we can change colors. We just bring in color B, and the previous stitch should be closed now. And that's it! Color B is on the hook so we can work with it in the new stitch. We'll make the first stitch for this row. Don't forget that for tapestry, we need to drag the yarn at the back of the new stitches. And since we just need to make one stitch with color B, we will not even close it. Because we need to change colors again, we'll go back to color A. 
so we close the stitch with color A and we'll be able to see the first stitch in color B closed off. We set the marker to remind us that this is the first stitch for this first row and with our tapestry diagram. We'll keep going as the pattern shows, so we need to make three stitches in color A. So we have one. In the next one we make our second single crochet. And after that we'll make the third one, but we'll leave it open because it's the last one before changing colors. So we bring back in color B. As you may have noticed, I'm moving the yarn at the back, so it's inside the single crochet stitches. And now we just need to repeat the sequence. So we change to color A, which is the one we'll use to make three single crochet stitches. This only takes practice. The yarn can be a little tricky to work with, but we'll get used to having it here. As you can see, the pattern for bigger sizes has the same instructions. It is just that it has two more sequences because the initial circle is made with 40 stitches. We'll keep going. Remember to change to color B and then right back to color A. And this will be the instructions until we go all the way around. Perfect, so I'm almost at the end. Remember that it has a slight change, so we can check again our pattern and we'll see that for this part we'll only make two stitches in color A and one in B. Keep in mind that the differences at the end of each row are there so that the pattern matches as we go with the project. So we just have to follow the diagram. We make two stitches in color A and then we make the change to color B. In order to begin the new row, we'll check again our diagram so that we see what are the instructions for this one. For row 2, we'll begin with two stitches in color B. One in A, and then we have three in B, one in A, three in B, one in A, until we get to the end. And the very important thing from this point on is that we'll begin making the centered single crochet stitches. So I'll show you how to make this variation of a single crochet stitch. The regular single crochet stitches are done in what I call the top loop from the previous row. We use those two loops that every stitch has at the top. This causes the stitch to be a little bent. So for the centered single crochet stitch, what we'll do is we'll work between the two vertical lines of the stitch from the previous row. This is where we'll insert the hook. Sometimes it goes through super easily and sometimes we need to use a bit of strength. But the result is worth it for our project because we'll end up having a centered stitch that imitates knitting with two needles. So we'll always crochet between the two vertical lines. That's where we'll insert the hook. We keep making our color code, but don't forget to mark the first stitch. And now we have to look for that space between the two vertical lines from the single crochet in the previous row. And in there is where we'll make our new single crochet stitch. The first row of centered single crochet stitches can possibly be a little complicated, but you'll see that the effect we get is worth it, so I suggest you keep trying. And you'll see that you get used to it. We keep going, so the pattern now says that we should make three stitches in B. And then we make one in A. I will make a little pause here to show you a trick that makes it easier to get through those two vertical lines. We can use our hook to push the first line a little bit. And it will be easier for us to bring the yarn to the back. I'll change colors now. And if you find it difficult to go straight in, because sometimes the stitch won't let us, we can use the hook to push the first vertical line, and then you'll see how much easier it gets. 
I suggest you try it if you're finding the center stitch a bit more complicated. I promise you this tip will make things easier for you. So we keep going with our project. This is almost the end of row 2 from our diagram. And it shows that we need one stitch in color A and one in B to finish off the row. Remember to always check how to end the row because it's always a bit different. So for now I'll make one stitch in color A and one in B. We're doing centered stitches. Sometimes the end of the row is a bit trickier. I don't know why, but it almost always is. So here we are now, and by the end of row 2, we'll begin to see the results of our pattern. So now we'll check our diagram to see what we need to do for row 3. So for row 3, we'll see that we have color C, 3 in B, 1 in C, 3 in B. So I'll bring in the color C, which for me is brown. We bring in the new color. Remember to pull in the previous threads we were using, and we make the first stitch in color C. Now look for the vertical lines in the previous row, and in there we'll make our centered stitch. It's time to change colors to B. And we'll keep pulling in color A for some stitches. It has to be at least in 5 stitches so we can cut it. So I'll pull it in a bit longer and in a bit I'll show you how to cut it. We keep crocheting according to the instructions of the pattern. Don't forget to set the marker in the first stitch of the row. And now we just have to keep going. Like I said, we'll pull in color A for some more stitches so that it does not become loose. Do this for at least 5 or 6 stitches more. And once we have made more of this third row, we'll stop for a little while and we'll cut color A and any other thread we have. And then we keep going for this row number 3. You have seen the instructions, we just need to keep going with the color coat on the tapestry pattern. Since we're not making increases, we'll see that the project grows in one direction and we can use our hand to calculate the size. By now, the result of the center stitches will also be clearer. I'm ready now to begin row 8 which marks the beginning of the central band for our mittens. For smaller sizes, this band is shorter. In this case, it has two rows less than the diagram for men's sizes. For bigger mittens. If you want to change the size of this band, you can either add or remove rows. So now we'll change colors. This band is almost all made in color C which ends up being the protagonist of the project, so we bring in color C. Make sure to create some stitches before you cut color B, which is the one we'll stop using now and will for a while. Remember that we can cut a color once we have pulled it in 5 or 6 stitches. So I'll just cut color B. And even if we're not going to be using for now color D, which for me is the dark green, I will keep pulling it in so that these stitches have the same volume as the previous row we have made. So it will stay there inside the color B stitches until it's time to bring back color A at the center of the band. You already know the instructions for this row, we just have to pay attention to the color changes the diagram needs. Perfect, so I have finished the central band. And if we check our pattern, we'll see the part that says thumb opening. This is a reference so that we are very aware we can begin the thumb opening in any of the following rows. We'll create this opening once we get to this distance. From the very top of our middle finger to the exact point where the thumb begins in our hand. So we can measure our mitten in our hand. I think for me it needs about 3 more rows before that opening. If you're making this for somebody else, you can ask them to measure this part of their hand, 
so that we are sure to make the opening at the right part. So I will continue with the diagram. We'll keep changing colors until I consider that it's the right time to make the thumb opening. This opening will always be made while beginning a new row. I'll show you how to make it in a little bit. I have made those three more rows. And as we can see, it's right there where my thumb opening needs to be. You see that my fingers are comfy at the top, nothing is too tight and it's a great time to make the opening for my thumb. We have to be at the change of rows. The marker is right there and what we'll do is leave some free stitches before and after the marker. For women's sizes it will be three stitches free before and after the marker and for men's sizes we'll leave four stitches free on each side of the marker. So I'll undo the last three stitches, so that they are free for the thumb opening. Those three spaces before the marker are free now. Then we have the stitch where the marker is, which is the center, and then we leave three more stitches. This is the stitch in we'll all start after we leave this hole for the thumb. Remember that for men's sizes we should leave 4 stitches on each side and we should begin crocheting in the 5th one. Since this thumb opening falls in a different row for each of us, we need to check in which stitch will begin the new row according to our color code, so that we can bring in the color right here, before we begin making the opening. My pattern says I should jump to a stitch in white which is color A for me. And you need to check in which color you begin and if you need another color just bring it in before you start your opening. Since for women's sizes we have 7 free stitches and 9 for men, we'll make 7 chains for smaller sizes and 9 chains for bigger sizes. Perfect! Now we'll skip those stitches below. Like I said, it's 3 for women and 4 for men. And we go back to the row while pulling in the other thread we should have for our project. We pull it in in this new stitch which is always a centered single crochet and it's very important to make sure that this thread is as long as the chains we made because we'll have to hide it in later on. So make it be as long as the chains. This is how it should look like. This is the hole our thumb will stick out from. It's the same process for the right or left hand. So now we'll just keep going with our pattern. We'll follow our color code until we get to the other side and make our official thumb opening. Perfect, so we have gone all the way around and we are at the other side of the opening. So we crochet in the last stitch before we begin working in the opening. We'll just complete the opening with the stitches that are needed for this row. And with the first stitches for the new row. Make sure to pull in the thread we left in this row and the one from the previous row. So we have the 7 chains for women's sizes and 9 for men's. We'll be crocheting in those chains, so we'll look for the first one. We insert the hook in in order to make the single crochet we have to make according to the color code. Remember that this will be different because we can make the opening in different rows. I'm finishing row 20 from the pattern for women. And I'm about to begin row 21. So these are the last two stitches from my row number 20. You will be making the last stitches for whichever row you're on. And now my diagram marks a new color change. For example, for me it's time to bring in color C for the next row. Make sure to check your pattern so you can begin the new row properly. And for me, these are the first 4 stitches for this row. The only difference is we were working in the chain and not in the single crochet stitches from the previous row. Once we are done working on that chain bridge, we can go back to the rest of our mittens, to the single crochets from the previous row. 
and we just need to keep following the diagram as it is according to the row we're on. We can see that our thumb opening has officially been made. I'll just move the marker to the first stitch from the new row, and now we'll make three rows in spiral for women's sizes and five for men's. After that, we'll make some decreases so we have some fitting towards the wrist. I have made those three rows for my size. Remember that for bigger size sets, it's five rows. And now we're ready to begin with our first decrease. We'll also make the decrease on the opposite side of the beginning of the row, so I will set another marker there as well. We will be making the decreases right where the markers are. So I'll show you the decrease for the beginning of the row. We'll just make an attempt at a single crochet, but we will not close it. It will remain open. And now we go to the next stitch available in which we'll make another attempt at a single crochet. We should have three loops on the hook, and we'll pull through the three of them in order to make the decrease. There you go! Where we had two stitches, now we'll just have one. And that loop the decrease created will be considered the first stitch of this new row. Now we'll just keep going until we get to the other marker, which is on the opposite side of the beginning of the row. It should be set approximately halfway through the row. So we remove the marker once we're there and we make the second decrease. Remember that we need to make a first attempt at a single crochet, we leave this open, then we go to the next stitch from the previous row, we yarn over, and we have three loops on the hook and we pull through all of them at once. That's how we get our decrease. I'll set the marker there again because we'll make two rows of decreases. So we set the marker back here in order to see where we need to make it again. We keep going again until we get to the start of the row. I've gone all the way around and will continue with the same instructions. We'll make one decrease on each side of the mitten. So we begin with the decrease at the beginning of the row. But we will need to use the top loop from the previous decrease. We will not be able to crochet a centered single crochet stitch for this one. For the second stitch we can do it because it's a normal stitch, and we make the first decrease for this row. We set the marker, that's the beginning of this new row, and we keep going until we go halfway through, which is where we'll find the other marker. In here we'll make another decrease. Remember that for this we'll work in the top loop since we can't make the center stitch. But in the second stitch we'll work as if we were doing a centered one. And then we make the decrease. I will not bring the marker back again, we'll just keep using the one at the beginning because we'll keep growing in a spiral, there will not be any more decreases. So we keep going. And now we should have 28 stitches for small sizes and 36 for bigger sizes. In total, we have made 4 decreases, so we have eliminated 4 stitches in our perimeter. And now we'll just keep going for a couple more rows so we get to the total length we want for our mitten. Remember that we still need to make the cuff. I have achieved my desired length and I will begin the cuff now. I want to change colors but you can make the cuff with the same color if you want to. I want to make it with my color B. So I change colors, and now it's time to begin. From now on we will not make centered stitches. Instead we'll work in the top loops of each of the stitches. So here I'll make a slip stitch for the first stitch of this row. And then we'll chain 3. In this row we'll make one double crochet in each stitch available until we go all the way around. So we make one double crochet, we go to the next stitch, we make another double crochet and so on until we go all the way around. 
I'm almost done now, so I'll make the last double crochet in the last stitch available. And to close off the row, we'll make a slip stitch in the third initial chain. This is the first row for the cuff. For the remaining ones, we'll begin with three chains, and then the first stitch we'll make one double crochet with the relief from the front. So we yarn over, we move the hook through the back of the stitch from the previous row, we'll see the stitch sticking towards the front, and in there we make one double crochet. We go to the next available stitch, in which we'll make a normal double crochet. And in the next one, we will make another double crochet with relief. You'll see this stitch in the front of the hook, and this is the sequence we'll follow until we go all the way around, which will create an elastic effect. So we keep going, one normal double crochet, and in the next one we make one double crochet with relief, and so on until we go all the way around. I'm finishing the row now, this is the last stitch and it should be a relief stitch. And to close the row off, we'll look for the third initial chain and in there we'll make one slip stitch. And like I said, these are the instructions for all the rows we want to make until we get to the length we want for the cuff. We'll always begin with three chains, and we repeat the sequence of relief stitches and normal stitches over and over until we go all the way around. We'll be working directly in the relief from the previous stitch, so it will look like a longer relief effect. And in here we have to make a normal double crochet. We can make as many rows like this as we want, it can be 3, 4 or 5. And once we are done, we'll make one chain, and then we can cut the thread, which is something we'll later hide in the stitches from the cuff we just made. Now let's learn how to make the thumb. So we go to where the opening is, we bring in the color we want for the thumb, and we'll insert the hook in the single crochet stitch at the very corner. These are all single crochet stitches and on the other side we have the chain. So that's where we'll make our thumb. Remember to leave a short thread that we can hide, and now we make one chain. And then we make one single crochet in that very same stitch in which we inserted the hook. So we have that single crochet now, and we'll make one single crochet in each stitch available on this side. And when we get to the other side, we'll work on the chains we have available. So here we'll make 7 single crochet stitches for women's sizes, and when we get to the other side, we'll work in the chains. Just like this. In this corner for the thumb, it should look like this. And now we keep making 1 single crochet in each stitch available. Remember that we should have 7 chains for small sizes and 9 for big sizes. Once we get to the other side and we have gone all the way around, we'll keep growing on a spiral, so in the first stitch from the previous row we'll insert the hook, and then we'll make 1 single crochet stitch. This is not mandatory, but if you want, you can set the marker in the first stitch of the row, so that you know how many you made. We'll make one more row, and when we have finished the second one, we'll begin the third with a little change. We'll skip the first stitch of the third row, and we'll make one single crochet in the second stitch. By skipping this stitch, we'll help reduce the size of the circle for our thumb. And now we just keep making single crochet stitches, one in each stitch available. We'll stop again at the beginning of the fifth row to make one more skip. So we skip to the second stitch, and then there we'll make one single crochet in order to keep making this thumb space smaller. 
After this, we keep growing on a spiral until we get 5 cm for women's sizes and 6 for men's. When we get to this part, we'll see that the finger is barely visible. So if we have to make a few more rows, we can. This is the part to customize our project. And from this point on, we'll skip one stitch and then we'll make one single crochet in the next one. We'll do this in order to close the space quickly. So we skip one stitch and then we crochet one single crochet in the next one. We'll keep going until we basically don't have any more stitches to skip. And when we can't do this anymore, we'll close the project with a slip stitch in the opposite stitch. The one that's in front of where we are. Right in there we'll make one slip stitch and our space for the thumb should be closed. We'll just make one final chain so that the stitches don't become loose. We cut the thread, remove the hook, and then we'll send this thread inside the mitten with the help of a yarn needle. And once it's in, we'll hide it in the stitches of the mitten. And that's it, crochet lovers! We should have our first mitten ready. We just need to make the other one for the other hand with the same instructions. So let's get to it! I hope you liked this tutorial and that you show me all the pictures of your projects on social media with your color combinations and the personal details you add to your own creations. I'll see you over here very soon with a new tutorial, and also way sooner on social media. Have a great day, crochet lovers!